What do narcissists look for in a victim? How do they kind of run the little test before they decide who they're into? How do narcissists view marriage? That's what we're talking about today at queenbeing.com. Let's get started. My name is Angie Atkinson and on this channel I offer free daily video coaching to help you discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse and toxic relationships. I like to call it toxic relationship rehab. If that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button and let's get going. So why do narcissists get married anyway? I mean, the fact is, obviously we know they have a fear of commitment, some of them. They have a fear of all this other stuff. So what causes them to go ahead and get married? Why do they marry? Because they get something out of that deal. They get supply. Why do they remarry so quickly after they discard their supply? Well, part of that is to prove that you meant nothing to them. And part of that is they think if they remarry after they divorce you out of the blue, that everyone will think that you're the flawed one and not them. How does a narcissist really see marriage? Well, one of the things that a narcissist sees about marriage is that it's an opportunity to control the person they're marrying. They can have control of the person. They can have control of the money. They can have control of the assets. They can have control of the feelings of that person, the life of that person, everything about that person. Plus, we already know that narcissists tend to latch on to empaths many times not always but many times they like to entrap someone they like to make sure that it's hard for you to go away from them that's part of the reason they get married they want to make you commit before you see their true self that's why they get married so fast once a narcissist gets you to marry him or her they know that you've taken a vow you may share children you may share a home you may share money you may share all these things all of these things lead to you being stuck to them it being harder for you to get away from them they've sucked you in that's why they do it so fast that's why they do it so completely narcissists rush into everything when it comes to commitment for this reason one of the biggest and potentially most surprising reasons that narcissists get married is because they don't want to be alone they can't stand to be alone if they have to be alone they might actually have to look at themselves and see who they are and they just don't like that. Narcissists tend to be verbally abusive. They tend to be liars. They tend to gaslight you and try to make you think you're crazy. They stalk you. They steal from you. They smear you. They endanger your health just by being in your life because they're so abusive sometimes. Sometimes they get married because they want to steal from you without legal repercussion. Sometimes they get married because they see themselves as, I need to breed, I need to make children because if I make children then I'll have this legacy and people will love me forever. Sometimes they get married because of a status thing. They want to have a hot person to carry around, you know, to have on their arm and make everybody think they're amazing. Of course, they will then turn around and treat that person like trash in private. Marriage offers sort of a private haven for a narcissist to be their true self. They can be horrible to their wife or husband because that's somebody that can't run away very easily. So this way when they're out in the world they can be a nice kind awesome to be around person and at home they can treat you like crap and if you have kids with them they'll probably treat your kids like crap too. You have to understand the narcissist always has a motive. They always have a reason for doing exactly what they're doing. When you are in a relationship with a narcissist and you see that oh my gosh they've rushed me into this relationship you gotta know there's something in it for them. They're not doing it because they love you because narcissists really aren't capable of loving people in a normal human way. Maybe they want money, maybe they want fame, maybe they want power. Who knows? Whatever the reason for getting married is it's not because they love you and that's the part that sucks. Narcissists see marriage as a means to an end, as a means to get their supply needs met. Narcissists are always so concerned about their image that being married might just be something they think they're supposed to do. They need people more than the average person. They need someone to literally be their narcissistic supply, which is someone they suck all the energy from in order to appear normal. They use you, they abuse you, they scream at you, yell at you, use you as an emotional dumpster. But again, it's not about love for a narcissist. It's about getting their needs met. The fact is that securing attention, that's the narcissist's primary goal in life. That's what they need. They literally need your attention to survive. So if they marry you, you get stuck with them as far as they see it. They're addicted to that attention. They need it desperately. There's almost nothing they won't do for it. And that's why I think narcissists get married so quickly and that's how I think they see marriage. What do you think? You doubt me? Well, if you know a narcissist, why don't you ask them, what do you love about me? What do you love about your spouse? Nine times out of ten, they're going to say, I love the things that you do for me, not I love things about you personally. I love how you rub my back. I love how you take care of the house. I love how you take care of the kids. I love how you bring home lots of money. 
whatever it is, it's never going to be about, I love that you're so smart, I love that you're so attractive, I love that you're so sweet and kind to everybody that you meet. It might be, I love that you're hot and all my friends are jealous, but it's not going to be anything about you personally. It's always going to be how you affect them that they like you or love you for. Try it. Test it. You'll see. So I'm going to go over a few traits that narcissists typically look for when they're dealing with finding a new victim. All right, let's just go right through, shall we? One of the first qualities a narcissist will look for in a victim is someone who might have some vulnerability, someone who has had previous experiences that were negative in the whole human field. Let me just give you an example from television, okay? If you've ever seen the show called How I Met Your Mother, there's a character on the show played by Neil Patrick Harris called Barney Stinson. This character, while he's hilarious, and I can't deny enjoying him because he's so outrageous and because I know in real life NPH is gay and he plays such a good womanizer on the show. <laughs> this character, though, is the epitome of a narcissist. So one of the things that Barney Stinson looks for in a woman is what? Daddy issues. He looks for a woman who has been broken, had issues in the past because of something with her father or whatever, and then he comes in and swoops in and does his whole narcissistic love bombing thing, although his are shorter, <laughs> shorter efforts usually because he's a womanizer. So the thing that you have to know is that people who are attractive to narcissists often have some underlying issues like that, parent issues or they've been bullied in school or something like that and this has caused them to become very sensitive people and has caused them to want to please the people they do care about and often because people who have been treated this way may find themselves kind of downgrading to, from what they could have, if that makes any sense. So a narcissist sees someone who's vulnerable emotionally because of previous abuse as someone who is easier to glom onto and they can you know, sort of temporarily help raise that person's self-esteem while at the same time in their minds kind of getting in on somebody who's really too good for them. But they think they're, the, the victim thinks they're not too good because they've been abused and taught otherwise. Does that make sense? Because we doubt our worthiness. It's because we don't believe that we are good enough or that we are worth anything that they are able to get to us. It's what makes us vulnerable to narcissists. The next quality that I'd like to share with you is how when a narcissist is trying to choose a victim, they're looking for someone who is going to be dependable, someone who's going to always be ready to help them anytime they need it. So people who are prime choice victims, they are people who tend to be joiners or helpers. They, you know, if they see somebody in pain, they want to help that person. And that's unfortunately something that an empath naturally does. When you're an empath, you naturally want to help anyone that you see who needs help. So a narcissist picks up on that. Another thing that we are that might shock you is a lot of us have a little bit of perfectionism in us. And now we might not have perfect this or perfect that, but there's something about us that is perfectionistic. And one of the most common perfectionist areas that we have as people who are attractive to narcissists are our perfectionism our perfectionism falls where we need to help people in a perfect way. So we might often keep kind of a low profile. We're kind of the behind the scenes people. And a lot of times we don't want to overshadow our friends and colleagues. We want to lift them up. We don't want to stand in front of them. This of course brings me to my next point, which is they want someone who will take personal responsibility for everything, even things they didn't do, and someone who will work really hard for them. So they're looking for someone to be responsible, hard worker, someone who will always comply with whatever assignment they get from the narcissist. So they might test you in little ways, like they might be like, oh, here's 20 bucks, go to the store and get me this, that, or the other thing. And if you go, oh, don't worry about it, I got it. <laughs> Number one, you, you pass the little narcissist test because you're willing to spend your own money. Number two, you don't even think about the fact that they just ask you to go to the store when you just told them you worked all day and your back hurts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that kind of stuff. And then the last quality that I'm going to share with you today is kind of surprising, but it's true. And it is above average intelligence. Yeah, they look for the smart people. How about that? And on the same token, they look for good looking people. Now, I know you're like, I'm not good looking. Well, you know what? You are good looking and and even if you don't think that you're good looking, someone does. The point is, they narcissists look for very smart, intelligent, bright lights. They look for people who are very skilled, very trained, very focused. People who, you know, have enthusiasm. People who are passionate. People who have a lot to say, a lot to do. People who other people are attracted to, okay? 
narcissists don't want to be with someone who can walk around, you know, looking freaky or scary or weird. They want to be with someone who makes them look good. And if you have high intelligence and you have, you know, a cheery personality and blah, 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 you're perfect for a narcissist. So I know you're sitting here and you're going, well, I'm tired all the time and I'm exhausted and I'm depressed and sad and I don't do my hair anymore or whatever. Well, that's because you're with a narcissist, honey. You have to give yourself a minute and you have to t think back to what you were when you met the narcissist. They may have taken you from feeling really good about yourself to feeling really bad about yourself, but somewhere inside of you there is a person who is beautiful and bright and intelligent and smart and ready to move forward in her life or his life. And if this is you, this is why you were chosen by the narcissist. You have to remember, narcissists are always looking to feed their ego. They want attractive people. They want to get a prize or a trophy person. They have very little respect for weakness. And honestly, they have no interest in someone that just anyone could get their hands on. They want someone that they have to reach up to get. They don't want to reach forward. They don't want to reach down. They want to reach up. Do you understand what I mean? Narcissists are always looking for a better supply, even when they found someone amazing. That's not your fault. It's nothing to do with you. It's not that you're not a good supply. It's just that maybe you have too much independence for them, too much self-respect. The narcissist needs other people to be envious of the person they obtain as their supply. That's why a lot of times they come on real strong in the beginning and they offer you this romance like you've never seen before. It's the love bombing phase. And that's why a lot of times when you get with a narcissist, one of the, one of the things that you hear over and over again is, oh my God, they're too good to be true because they are my friend. <laughs> so once a narcissist picks their target, they'll stop at nothing until they get that person. The bigger the challenge, the harder they'll work. And the more they trash you, the more they tear you down, the more once, once they've obtained you, they're mad at you for making them work that hard if you're a hard to get type of person. Here's the biggest thing. The ultimate ego boost for a narcissist is to take someone who's independent and self-sufficient, strong, and make them completely dependent, completely controlled. Of course, if you dump the narcissist after all of that, it just makes them try harder. And every single time they convince you to take them back, it's sort of like another little notch in the little narcissist's belt. Just remember, you don't deserve it. It's not your fault. Now that you know how a narcissist tests their victim, you know what you need to do to fix it, don't you? What you need to do is have confidence. Love yourself unconditionally and accept nothing less than you deserve. If you don't know what you deserve, sit down and think about it for a while and try to figure out what your deal breakers are in a relationship. What will you accept? What will you not accept? Don't ever rush a relationship. If you can avoid in the future rushing into relationships, rushing into commitments, rushing into marriages, you may be able to avoid narcissists altogether. That's not a guarantee, but it certainly is a start because if you take the time to get to know someone well enough to know for sure that they are not going to be good for you, then maybe you can save yourself the trouble of accidentally burying a narcissist. I know if I had waited a little while longer and gotten to know my narcissist a little bit better, I wouldn't have been in that situation, but I married him after only five months of knowing him. It was the wrong choice. And that's why I made this video today because how do narcissists view marriage? They view marriage as a permanent source of narcissistic supply. You deserve better than that, my friend, and so do I. This leads me to the question of the day. And the question of the day is, what do you think? How do you think that narcissists view marriage? Let's talk about it. All right, that's all I've got for you right now. As always, thank you so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life, and hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. Make sure you take a look at the links I'm leaving for you here and here, and hit that subscribe button if you want to learn more about narcissistic abuse and recovery. And check out the links I left for you in the cards above. I'll see you soon.